Hello, welcome. This is what it's like to be a parent. Uh, I am your host, Mike, aka the Mecha Man. Um, today, I am actually joined with my wife. Uh, this is episode two of the podcast. I am joined with my wife, Ashley. Go ahead and say hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she she kind of wanted to do an impromptu. Uh, portion of this uh the little one is asleep right now so that actually is makes uh, it like 10 times easier to have a conversation oh yeah it totally makes it so much easier to have a conversation uh especially with her in bed uh this is actually able we're able to do this at night right now it's about i don't have anybody o'clock. coming in here asking me to do something i don't have anybody saying that they need my attention every five seconds. <laughs> Nobody's screaming over us while we're having a conversation. That's pretty decent. I always try and do it during nap times and I've been struggling to try and find time to do it. So uh, this is actually kind of working out in a benefit uh, in the aspect of earlier today, we went and celebrated her second birthday today. Uh, we went to SeaWorld, it was really cool. Uh, we went to SeaWorld, we did, um, the breakfast Elmo, with Elmo breakfast with Elmo and friends uh, like most kids she kind of sat there and was a little bit afraid of uh, no my child was terrified <laughs> terrified she had a death grip it would not let go because she thought cookie monster was going to eat her like if she was a cookie <laughs> and then looked at Elmo because well he must be fire because he's red she would you, would you give her the little doll? And it's like, oh, yay, oh, love. And, and we she... prepped her and everything. Oh, we're going to go eat breakfast with Elmo. You're going to go see Elmo. We get there, and it's like I just introduced her to the devil. And it, it... she wasn't all that ready. Uh, looking around, there were some other kids closer to, what was it, about five? I would say there's a there was a kid closer to, like, five or six that, that was comfortable. But the kid that was closer to Shaylee's age that was sitting behind us, that little boy freaked out. Yeah. He uh, gave his mom a good grip. Uh, there were a couple other kids that were about five to eight that were uh, a little... Took a while for them to warm up to it because uh, the characters were right there watching and stuff. So it's a little uh, jarring to see your characters full size right next to you. I would definitely say like if you're a parent and you're wanting to like do that kind of thing, think about is your kid afraid of Santa? Which yeah, Shaylee is. That's... So if your kid's afraid of Santa, then your kid is not ready to go meet Elmo. Yeah. Uh, that is actually a very good comparison, you know. You but at the take... same time, like that was December. We're now in May. I thought, okay, six months later, it shouldn't be a big deal. Something with a lot of hair shouldn't scare her. <laughs> and Because the cat. <laughs> well, the cat's small and mobile. Not that uh, Elmo is, like, stagnant, but you know what I mean. I think it takes a little bit of more of a, uh, a prep work, kind of bringing them all, like, exposure over time builds her ability to go, okay, this is something that's going to happen all the time, and I'm, I'm a little bit more okay with this, as opposed to... Well, think about when she went to do the actual show. Like, when she went to sit for the show, yeah. it was the second exposure of seeing like these big furry things in her face, right? At first she was like, oh, oh no. And she was holding on for dear life. And then afterwards, you gave her about like a good, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes into it. She was, it was okay. She was yeah. like watching it. She almost like clapped. Did I say a bad word? No. Oh, is it okay then? I was still. <laughs> My bad. Trying to keep it a little uh, PG. PG. For that, that was PG 13. So um, if you're under 13, please turn Air off muffs. now and go ask mommy and daddy if it's okay to listen to the idiots talking on the TV. <laughs> Earmuffs. Uh, Don't you have questions for me? Yes, I do, actually. All right. Uh, I will get into the questions. This is um, my husband. Here's left field. He's in it. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Let me see what some good questions are to start you off with. Oh, am I special? There are special ed questions. Well, for I kind of, I kind of try and keep the same questions, or I'm gonna try and keep generalized same questions. Maybe change a little bit for uh, profession and stuff. Um, you should always gear towards your audience. 
Well, I am fabulously audience. It's also oh, it's don't also, look at my nails. It's also who the the person is. Like if they're you know more if, experienced, you want to ask more experienced questions. Generally, yeah. You know, if you're you're gonna be you know new to being a parent or you're expecting to. Well, don't ask my parents so. <laughs> because they're just gonna be way off. Uh, here's one that I kind of. It's still kind of hard for me to grasp the understanding of a good answer for what was it like before kids easy <laughs> <laughs> I listen I just got done teaching about <laughs> the reproductive system okay <laughs> so I gave a whole spiel about what life was like when Shayla was first born to let them know no it's not that easy even at 32 it's not that easy so to say what was life like before Shaylee I mean you know on one hand like one hand you're like saying okay yeah it it was empty and oh I wish I had kids and oh I want to be a mom and you know all these expectations of what you want since the time that you were like in your early 20s at least in my case seeing all your friends have kids you're like oh man I really want kids working with kids oh I really want kids and then everybody telling you, oh, no, 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 you, you're going to find out, you know, once you have kids, oh, it's nothing what you think, blah, 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 it's completely different. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. You know what you're talking about, you're stupid. Well, then, you know, prior to having kids, I, I think I was kind of like, okay, you know, I was happy with you. We were doing our thing and being able to enjoy each other's company, not having to worry about oh, we gotta get a babysitter, or oh, you know, do we have enough money after daycare expenses? Do we have enough money? Like, I think that's a big issue now, finances, wondering, you know, what's in Definitely, order. Yeah. Um, because I'll honestly say, between the <laughs> two of us, our income before Shaylee, it was no big deal. I, I mean, we were able to pay rent, we were able to go out whenever we felt like it, we were able to buy clothes whenever we felt like it, and there was no real, discussion but once she came it was like okay this is how much we make this is how much goes in this is how much comes out and you know so I feel like before kids maybe I was a little bit irresponsible okay <laughs> after kids I am definitely more responsible because the stature is hey I'm not taking care of just myself anymore I'm taking care of my daughter and I don't want her to feel any kind of shaft because, oh, well, her mama doesn't know what she's doing. So, to answer your question, different, easy, <laughs> irresponsible. It, it, we definitely were able to go out quite a bit more. We were less, what was it, more or less frugal? Oh, less frugal. Yeah, we were. We would go. We would go spend money. Oh, we need. We well, want, then we try want, to be pregnant after being wants. able to go out on a Friday or Saturday night and have a few oh, oh. Uh, drinks, and then be pregnant. And be like, nope, can't do that anymore. Let me yeah. tell you about being pregnant. Okay? <laughs> Here we go. Here's a roll. I can't stand being pregnant. I hate being pregnant. If you want to be pregnant. More power to you. It's not for me. I don't like it. It is the most. Well, I, well no. hold on. I mean, there are there are a few that. Uh, tell enjoy. me what part was enjoyable for you, because by all means, when the hell were you pregnant, my dear? <laughs> there, there I are... was the one carrying the uh, spawn. I was the one being made to throw up. I was the one being made to take the prenatal pills, which also made you throw up. I was the one who, at seven months pregnant. I don't know. My feet just started to expand. You'd walk and it'd be like you were pushing a hole, like a finger inside a hole sort of situation. You couldn't feel anything. I mean, it just hurt. You went from being able to see your legs to shave them to, oh, Michael, can you lift my stomach up so I can see my legs again to shave them? Well, I mean, there are some women that uh, they don't mind the pregnancy. For them, they have... They yeah, because that, they're getting paid. They're that, called surrogates. No, they have that pregnant glow where it's like they're not. It doesn't bother them because their mindset is more of a. I'm oh, I'm bringing this. into a life. Yes, and that's oh, a lovely life. What's that one movie 
uh, what to expect when expecting or something like that. And it has all the different moms and their perspectives. And the blonde haired chick, she really wants to get pregnant. She tries so hard. She finally gets pregnant. She's super excited. And then she realizes as she's getting pregnant, as things are going along, oh my God, this sucks. What did I get my life into? And then she starts complaining on this huge platform about... Oh, well, let me tell you. And, like, she just peed herself. And so she made her switch, uh, assistant switch clothes with her. Do you know what I'm talking about? It had Anna Kendrick and mm -hmm. stuff. That, my friend. I'm the blonde haired chick. <laughs> the surrogate. Yep. Uh, no, she wasn't a surrogate. Oh, that wasn't the one that was... No, no, no. She wasn't a surrogate. What was that? It was the one where it had the different moms. Anna Kendrick was the unwed uh, one who had hooked up with a boy. And then the blonde haired chick... She was married, and the, oh, I'm thinking and, the, of the, and the dad of her husband was like this huge Jimmy Buffett I'm thinking, Margaritaville. I'm thinking of the other one where it's the the one woman was single and she wanted kids and she had the the, the surrogate. <laughs> That's the movie I was thinking of. Uh, no, no, I, the, I'm the that blonde. That was the and the other one, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm the blonde-haired chick. Um, here's a great question. How did the dynamic between you and me change versus before, during, and after? The dynamic before you and I? Before pregnant, during before, pregnancy, and okay. after. So before we got pregnant, the dynamic before us was very, like, you know, carefree. I would say that, yeah. Um, And then, like, <clears throat> once we got pregnant, because of my hormones... Apparently, according to you, I became crazy. It's and it's the, then it's the oh, crazy no, 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 no. Let's talk about being pregnant. You want you want to keep going? Let's talk about being pregnant. Okay. So, um, I couldn't clean the cat box. That became an issue. Yes. Uh, uh, we had to change litter for that because I uh, I can't handle the dust. It it just it builds up in there. I have really bad sinus issues. And so I had practice so what had it was like to have it. a baby before having a baby. <laughs> Anyways. It's called allergies. It's called baby. And I love my uh -huh. big baby. But um, no, like during pregnancy, it, it was just like, I think my hormones and, but it was still, it still wasn't really that challenging in the sense of we still didn't have someone else to worry about. You know what I mean? We still only had to worry about ourselves. If I had to stay late at work, whether I was pregnant, not pregnant, it wasn't a big deal to me because I was like, oh, Michael will understand. He'll just go home and play video games. I He'll think, be fine. I think for us, it was more of a, what was, like, for me and you, we went from, well, we really don't really, it's not that we didn't care about our health. It's just our health was not one of those things of, okay, we got to sit there and, you know, worry about especially for you on your side of like you know what is it you're eating are you eating everything correctly it was oh yeah us. that was a big deal we ate what we wanted remember then, in the morning time too i was oh. i would always have to have a shape because i was convinced my child needed to be a genius so in order to make my child a genius in the early developmental stage listen i did my research oh, she don't look is at me too. I, I was like, okay, she needs a lot of folic acid. So every morning, I'm going to have a banana with spinach and all kinds of berries and a little bit of uh, chocolate powder protein mix or whatever it is, put it together with cashew milk, okay? Because I had that and the prenatal pills. So in the morning time, I you remember when I was pregnant, I was like a freaking tornado trying to get ready for work. Oh, Do you remember the one lot. time where I tried to make the smoothie and I accidentally dropped it? And it went everywhere, and I was already five minutes late for work. I think I almost had a meltdown over a freaking smoothie because I was freaking you out. You did have a meltdown. Well, no, I did have a meltdown, but I was freaking out because I'm like, okay, here I am. Now I gotta clean all this up. So, I mean. During... And we had to leave the house at the same time, so uh -huh. it's not really like. No, right, exactly. And then, what was the question? Uh, <laughs> No, you no. just let me what? sit here and I'll just talk about whatever <laughs> yeah. I want to. You want to uh, talk about candy? Let's talk about candy. The the change, like, during and after. I think for during, we, we sat there and we were more focused on what your health was like. We were so more focused way. on each other. Individuals and each other. Well, I didn't really think I was focusing on myself. I was doing pretty much... Uh, I was going to the gym. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> Yeah. I still don't. Does the camera go down or up? <laughs> okay. 
Rocking a dad bod. You gotta rock the dad bod in order to enjoy it. Yeah, that's every dude's excuse for getting pregnant <laughs> these days. They could have a dad bod. <sighs> How's the dad to let go? <laughs> uh, but we we did. We generally uh, tried. Or for me, I sat there and I was focusing more on your health, what your your intakes were to make sure that before, or after I was pregnant, during. So when I was pregnant. Yes. Okay. Like I was kind of like, did you have your shake? You know, I'd ask you, did you take your pill, your vitamins, pills, take your vitamins and stuff like that. So that way, you know, well, I was I like, was carrying the genius and we both agreed that she needed to be a genius. Yes. Yeah, she needs okay. to definitely be the, the uh, breadwinner in the yep. family. <laughs> Somebody's got to be a doctor and it's not for everybody. Uh, but how did our dynamic, how do you feel like our dynamic changed after she was born? I feel like a big thing that really changed was the fact that even though I have experience with kids, even though I've worked with kids since the time I was like freaking a teenager, right? And mind you, I got a light switch that turns off and on when I'm in the classroom with my potty mouth, so nobody say anything to me about it, all right? So, but anyways, when Shaylee was first born, even though I had experience, the both of us were still very much on edge. Like I still, because her birthday was this past Tuesday, you know, you get all those memories of what it was like when she first came into the hospital and all that stuff. And you know, we were very much on edge. I would say you were more on edge than I was, but we were both on edge. We were freaking out about, I remember we were sitting there and I was yelling at you because of how you were wiping her. And I thought you were wiping her wrong, which mind you, you know, my, I was stressing the fact that, okay, you got to write from front to back. And you're like, I am wiping from front to back. I'm just, I'm folding it over. So this part doesn't touch this part. And I was like, no, 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 no. You have to wipe from front to back. Don't do that. So I think, and then the time where we were, we were being too structured by the book. Well, because we were scared. As, yeah, it, like, it, we you're we're like legitimately <laughs> your first time parents. We're, you know, okay, you know, this is what our parents did. This is what we plan to do differently. This is what my parents didn't do. This is what we plan to do differently, sort of thing. And I think you know we had since we're 32 at the time in our mindset of I want to do this, this, and this after what I've seen. You know, these are the things that I like. These are the things that I don't like. But I will tell you this. I felt like you were a little bit neurotic, especially when the fact that we thought we thought that she was constipated. She was, how old was oh she? Oh my God. I think she was like, she, she wasn't right around, that old. It was, she was right less, around three weeks or so. And yeah. it was like a and full you were freaking 24 out. hours yeah. and I was freaking out. Freaking out because the kid hadn't done a doo-doo, right? So this stupid decides he's like going to go to Walmart because we ain't got no... Or we don't have any um, butt thermometers. We don't have any butt thermometers, and we or didn't Vaseline. have any Vaseline. So you decide you're going to go to Walmart. What was it, two or three o'clock in the morning. Yep, it was like two or three o'clock in the morning. And I had worked Walmart's the next open day. 24 hours, so you go to Walmart, you get the Vaseline, and we did what we had we to do and poking. shove it up the booty hole, and you know course nothing really happened and then I'm calling my mom going well what do we do and my mom's like well how long has it been and I think I even tried to contact the doctor the doctor was like well if it's not been 48 hours it's not really anything to worry about and they were like saying how as long as she's having you know normal urination don't worry about it it's okay and then I'm freaked out because I'm trying to breastfeed and let me tell you this I didn't realize this at the time and I should have and that's my fault but if I was drinking more water, like I feel like you could every have. five minutes, every hour on the hour, I feel like I could have breastfed a lot easier. When I tried to breastfeed, it she didn't latch on. So every time I wanted to breastfeed, I had to use the pumping things, and that was how she got the breast milk. And I mean, we barely got like what was it like a, a yeah that was liter? that was one thing that I know that during your during the pregnancy and post-pregnancy that I was on you, like, you need to drink this, and, like, you need to drink this. Well, when and I was pregnant, I drank a lot of water. Well, we got the we got the big... Uh, gallon. Wawa, Wawa uh, thermoses, which are... They're I a think gallon. it's a gallon or a half gallon. No, that's and, a gallon. Well, it's 64 ounces. So what is that's that? That's a half gallon. Gallon is 128. Yeah. But why... Okay, Math. But it's the size <laughs> of the, the milk jug. The it milk is, but it's, it's insulated. 
Oh, okay, uh, yeah, you win. And I was trying to get you to drink that whole thing, because, well, eight fluid ounces, eight times eight is 64. Um, no. I teach science. <laughs> right? No? Math. Eight times eight is 64. Okay, yeah. And you need eight fluid ounces, or eight glasses of water a day, and I was like, you need to drink this whole thing a day. And you would come back, and I, I come back cause with work, because I still have other drinks that I drink, but... You'd come back and it wasn't even half full. And then we'd got one that was clear and see-through that you could see and you'd sit there and do like tape marks. And that's actually a very good uh, tip to be like, okay, I have to drink this whole thing, but you do little marks on it. So that way by this time, this time, this time, and this time, you give it marks for you to be able to drink. And I was trying to get you to drink enough water. And, uh, and I think that is actually possibly a good reason why you couldn't uh breastfeed as well is that you yeah, weren't getting enough water what hit me was when i watched uh total divas on e <laughs> <laughs> i saw one of the chicks who was breastfeeding drink she's like oh here give me just one second and she like literally chugged like a half a liter of water in like five seconds and i was like oh maybe i should have been doing that this whole time yeah but you know what honestly like when you're a first time mom, and I know everybody's different, but for me, I was stressed out because when they say babies feed every hour on the hour, I mean, it's literally every hour you on the hour. Set you're your not, watch to it. But I mean, at the same time, it's not just nighttime or it's not just daytime. It's like 24 hours. So here I am running rapid, just trying to feed the child to begin with, trying to change the child, trying to wipe the child trying to soothe the child trying to put the child back to bed like all these things and you know at such a young age you had an easier time with her because you're like oh okay well if it's not diaper then it must be bottle if it's not bottle then you know it, it must be burping if it's not burping it must be this and you had like this whole set routine about oh, okay i do this this and this for me it was like oh my gosh okay so i gotta do this and then i gotta do this and then I gotta do this. And you know, my experience is more in the three to four year old and up department. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, I kind of sat there and took, uh, I, I don't know if I was kind of sitting there listening to the doctors a little bit more, but they were basically, they said basically, and that's when my mind went, okay, this is what I need to listen to. It was. Oh yeah, cause then you're in the <laughs> hospital like, no baby has ever died from crying. They like yes. stress that they, really they don't want you to that. like get stressed or like think that the child's gonna die because it's screaming crying. But it's like it's screaming your off, anxiety yeah. can go through the roof. Mine still does. Well, yours does now. Mine, I'm like Psh, fake. I call but, her out on it. I'm like, nope, that's fake. She's two. I know what she's doing. Especially while driving, mine still does. Um, nah. I think for our dynamic, like after she was born, it was not so much us. It was her. Like that was. Our total focus was her until she started is. sleeping through the night. Yeah. Once she started th sleeping through the night, I feel like that for us was like, okay, we can do a we can branch off and have a little bit more time to focus on each other. Well, once she started to be able to eat on her own, that took a lot of stress That took off a lot because even more. Because then you don't yeah. have to physically hold her with the bottle and feed her. Now you can set her down because number one, she can sit up and you can set her down with like a pouch and or we, a banana. What really got me is that we found out from daycare that she was already holding her own bottle a month or two before we found out. We're like, yeah, what? she literally did everything in daycare, <laughs> and then we found out afterwards. I'm like, like they're not telling. They would. They I, wouldn't I tell think us. she learned oh, she how to do crawl. This. Right. I, I'm pretty sure she learned how to crawl in daycare. Yeah, that was her first crawl was during daycare, and I, I was. I know I was upset because it's like, I wanted you I to I wish somebody would have said something. Yeah, like... But I think they just assume, oh, she must have done that already. Yeah. And so they don't think to say anything. Well, because, I mean, she's there what, roughly eight, she's nine hours. Whole day. Nine hours a day for yeah. five days. And then we get her the whole time on weekends and the rest of the night. I feel like so a step kind of... Or like, you know, we're... Co-parent. Yeah, what like I we're figure. divorced yeah. with daycare. Daycare gets her... Half the time, and we hours, get her the other so half. We get her the other. The other awake time. <sighs> but so no, that that's was... a good point to say. Like when children go to school or when they go to daycare, you are co-parenting. That's why it's, I feel strongly, especially as a teacher and a parent, that it's very important to have conversations 
with the teachers and not feel any kind of way. Because I know her teachers sometimes make me feel like, what? And it's like, well, no. Like, this is my child. I'm not an overbearing parent, but it's like, number one, I don't want her being that kid where they go, ugh, she's here. You know, that's always been my biggest fear. Like, I want them to be like, oh, she's here. Oh, we missed you. You know, like, I want them to like my child. So at the same time, I want to make sure, is she doing what she's supposed to be doing? Is she at the milestone that she's supposed to be at? Is she behaving like she's supposed to? Well, some of the other things is that we sit there and... We like, nitpick. We... They hate us. They like her. I, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, they hate us. Because they love her. Because we'll tell them certain things that we would... Because, I mean, you know, they're watching your child for eight hours. You have a little here say to go, Listen, if I want I'm you to do this. To, if I'm paying you $230 a week to watch my child, mm. then I have a good say-so about what I would like done, pending that it's not ridiculous. Yeah, like, uh, like diaper cream. I can't believe how hard of a concept it is to for, put diaper cream to on put a child's cream. butt. You li I mean, I understand, you know, medical reasons. You have to fill out this form, but when you say as needed, that's one of the things where it's like, if okay, it's if yeah. She's a she's a very pale child, and if it's pink, that's an as it's needed. It's pink. That's an as needed. Yep. She's not a pink child. She's a very pale child. She's not a pig. She's a she's a human. So. Uh, and it's only a few days where it's like we get home and it's like. Oh my gosh. Her what butt, happened? Yeah, her Who took sandpaper? Sore. Yeah. And it, and it does. It looks like sandpaper, and you know, I know there's sometimes, especially when she was small and little, that I would put. Like through the middle of the night, I put, uh, this is when she was kind of just starting to sleep through the night. And I did, um, I woke up in the middle of the night and I took care of it. It was poop. I put diaper cream on. And in the morning, you took took her in the morning and you holler at me. I, I wake up out of bed and you're like, did you put diaper, huge argument over diaper cream. And I'm like, yes, yes. Like I swore up and down that I put diaper cream on. And you're like, well, it's pink. It shouldn't be. And I'm like. I put diaper cream on. I'm just, I'm going to go back to bed. I got to wake up in 30 minutes. So <laughs> I was just like, uh, uh, this is the, I, I did what I was supposed to do. What do you want me to do? Okay. But what about an aha moment right now? Realizing what you just said compared to what happens at daycare. What if they're doing the same yeah, thing? That's... And then it just wears off because the kid goes outside it wears and off. she sweats. Well, the other thing is like, it's, it's like a, uh, like Neosporin. Like you're, you're kind Literally on newest born, it says once dried out, you gotta apply again. Like it's it's kind of like a hand lotion. Once your once your hands have sweated off the hand lotion, or you know, like you said, once it's gone, like it needs lotion. to go I like back put on. The lotion on to make me look tan. And if I was naturally tan, <laughs> I wouldn't even bother with it. Because to be honest with you, lotion makes me feel like all sticky. It's called sun. It's called I'm allergic. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm white. To the sun. <laughs> I'm white. That's what happens. And we're Anglo-Saxon. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Ask me another stupid question. <laughs> um. Is it why I didn't put you? No. No, it just gets warm over in the corner here. Oh my god, it's hot. I know. Uh, you can get the fan going a little no, bit. No, I'm good, because okay. then you're gonna complain about how it's drying out your sinuses. It does at night. Uh, I said short. Sure. I did. Um. It's like the good place. Everything's uh, the, gonna be changed. The birthing process. What were your thoughts about the whole birthing process? Despite, opinion, despite that one, the the whole dilemma, like your thoughts going into what it was supposed to be like versus what it ended up this. being. I got this. Okay. My biggest fear in giving birth was my downstairs ripping. That was my biggest fear because I felt like between what everybody was telling me about and how oh, much it would have hurt right my biggest fear was the downstairs ripping and how much that's gonna hurt and everybody tell me oh you're not gonna feel anything everything else is gonna be you know uh in pain so it's not gonna be any different blah blah this that and the other and i thought who are you kidding i don't know about you but i'm gonna feel a cut if someone freaking cuts me and you know the whole well if you don't rip they're gonna cut you and this that and the other and i was like Oh, I really don't want to do this. Even when I got there, I was like, all right, I'll see you guys later. It's not, she's not coming out. She's not ready. All right, we can do this again later. Am yeah, because she was, it was, I mean, we, we've experienced, you know, her 
you were having uh, some very mild contractions. I so didn't even know they were contractions. No, like it you was thought it was... It was <laughs> underneath my... You thought it was a poop rolling around. No, not even that. It just, it felt, the best way to describe it is it felt like indigestion. It felt like a tightening right underneath my boobies. Okay? And it just felt like, just like, just, just tight, just tight. And I was like, oof. And so I thought it was like maybe her just kind of like, you know, moving around or like, you know, pushing upwards or something. So I was continuously pushing down. Cause she kicked you a couple times and you did that too. Uh, yeah, but like, it just, it felt like it was just like right here. And I just was like, okay, I'm just gonna push it down. And then- Go back and, down, go back yeah, to sleep. Shh. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was her being a little poop. So I'm like, just, just can you go down? Like mommy needs a rest. And then I go to use the bathroom and I was like, nope. That's a little bit extra there. Yep. And so, you know, that, I mean, that wasn't that bad. I think what, between what I, it was enough to scare us to go to the doctor. Yeah. And between what I expected when I, before in labor, and then when I was actually in labor, two different things. When I was actually in labor, I didn't expect anyone to shove two wires up me and then rip them back out when, you know, stuff wasn't going the way it was supposed to. I didn't expect anyone particularly the doctor, to jump on me and push down on my stomach until well, stuff came really, out. She didn't really push hard. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Were you awake? Yes. Were you awake? Oh, no. That's that's when they uh, did the... Uh, because you weren't dilating, which to me... Because we we heard stories of a couple people that have... You know, they, they had a little bit of a leak uh, and they went to... This one fell asleep on the couch. Don't listen to him. I was already awake for 24 hours. And I was I just a fly in the dandelion. You had a nap somewhere in that time. Uh, but no, we went we went there. Uh, I was going there under the impression of either she's ha we're having the child or this is one of those. Thing in his butt in my face. Or this is one of those uh, scenarios where you have a little bit of a leak. You go there. Doctor says, well, you're not dilated to this point. You go home. Because that's that's what my mom said. She wasn't dilated. She went back home and then she came back later. I feel later. like that's what they should have done. Yes. I feel Instead like that's putting what... putting me on Pitocin and lying to me saying that, oh, well, we, you need to have this now. Which which you really didn't because you were... I don't think were, so. Your, your contractions... I wasn't dilated. No, you weren't dilated. Your contractions were already at a steady heartbeat two minutes apart. It was l like a clock. You could sit there I bet and I put your gone watch to, to full it. Term. How much you want to bet I could have gone to full term? Because she was three weeks early. Because, yeah, uh, three weeks and a day early. She uh, Because there were some... Who was it that sat there and said that they went there and they had to come back? One of your friends, wasn't it? I feel like it might have been Jen or... Yeah, one of your friends sat there and said that they they had a little bit of a leak. They went to the doctor and they were told to go home and they came back the I next day. I feel like day. it was Jen. So that it might have been Jen. Yeah, so that way they got some rest. And for us, I feel like that would have been... Beneficial. So um, good. We would have gone home. We would have crashed the hell out, woken up, and what is he doing? I think I have a cup of water. Hang on. Hey. Okay. Cat goes off and wants to drink out of our own cups, even though he's got his own man. Uh, but I feel like that's something that could have happened for us uh, but then they decided to keep us they said that you need to go on Pitocin because you weren't dilating which okay if I'm not dilating send my home my, my whole thing is if you have a baby plan you follow that baby plan and we I tried to sit there and say this and is I our was plan. very adamant about we were, I, didn't I was want both Pitocin. adamant I said no I said you want to sit there and put Pitocin in her then you need to get a court order right now and I said that to the doctor in the hallway I said if you want to put Pitocin in her you need to get a court order because that's not part of our plan well we rec I said I really don't care what you recommend or not this is what we're doing if if life or death early, then so yes it's not like Oh, you know, she's been in there two weeks after due date and we need to get her out. No, it's three weeks early. She could have stayed in there longer. She was only five pounds and uh, six ounces. Yeah, she was still So tiny, she was still so small. She that, could have stayed in there for another pound. That chicken wasn't done yet. No, they're lucky her lungs were developed. What is he getting into? I what don't is know. your problem? Hey, get out. Cat on the other side of the bed getting into stuff. Fun stuff, um, but you know, so you were not dilated. Uh, they are you tense? Your arms are crossed. No, I just crossed my arms. Uh, 
that means so, you're tense. No. Are you uncomfortable? No, I'm just sweating. That means you're uncomfortable. I'm hot. You're hot? Do yes. I make you hot? Do I make you uncomfortable <laughs> and hot? No, it's just warm in here. So, so I make where you we're, cool? <laughs> where we're at is that we're, we're at the doctor's. I've been awake 24 hours. You're up easily, at least, I think at least like 18 or so hours because this was in the middle of the night. I think, what was it, midnight when we got there or something like that? No, we, I think, I want to say like. No, we got there at like 10, this was nine, like 8 or 9 and then nine. we left and we're there at like 10 o'clock. Because I remember at 1 o'clock I think I had the epidural. No, you didn't have the epidural until later, the next, like the next day. No, I had the epidural in the middle of the night. I had the epidural around like one. Or, who was the one who was pregnant? Raise your hand. Michael, put your hand down. Thank you. <laughs> it was around one or two o'clock in the morning when I had an epidural. Oh, and then. And I had oh. two epidurals because the first one didn't take it. I was like, oh, hell no. They, uh -uh. they, they these, tell the dads. These contractions, once it hits like six centimeters, nope, I'm done. I know from now on, if I get pregnant again, once it hits six, Call that man in, bring him in, well, stick it, me in the back. It was also because they sat there and before the, the epidural, they were they were like, well, you're not dilated. And they take this thing that looks looks like a, a woman's toy. They shove it in you to dilate oh, you. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, what are you? And I'm I'm so no, that, tired. No, that like, wasn't to dilate me. They, they were trying I, to rupture the, uh, like fully rupture the I don't, I don't know what the heck you're talking about, but the thing that you're talking about, the the uh, the cylinder looking round thing that they shove inside of me, that was kind of like um, so they can see what the baby looked like. No, this was uh, the thing that they just went in and out to uh, rupture the placenta finish because you were just leaking. You weren't fully, uh, your water didn't Okay, break. let's change the subject because you're going to gross me out in like five minutes and I'm the one who was pregnant. And that was the thing that What's you the next hurt question? real bad. Um, yeah, I wanted to kill the doctor. Uh, and then I was half asleep trying to pay attention to that. I didn't. Uh, but the, the Oh, epidural. that's adorable. You were half asleep. Uh, oh, yeah. 24 hours. You stay awake then. Man, I can't wait till the day that men have strange. ovaries. <laughs> that's going to be the rejoice of the world. The day that God blesses you with ovaries. But, What's the next question? But anyways, you know, we go through the process, the uh, the epidural. He, he, they tell the dads, do not look. I'm going to look anyways. I'm a curious person. And they go to stick you. He pulls it back out and sticks you again because he didn't get the right spot. And he, I don't think he pulled it all the way back out, but he pulled it out enough to like reposition. Well, by that time again. too, the contractions it, are back to back. So he had a hard time. Yeah. He had to go in between, but he, he didn't get in the right spot. Then like an hour goes, and so another guy comes in to go to do it. And he actually was successful. Almost instantaneous. She's like, I felt a oh. difference. Yeah. And it was like, so. I'm like, yeah. Really? It was like, a, oh, I can relax now. And then you fall asleep for the yeah. rest of the pregnancy. <laughs> and I was tired. Your was mom, like, oh. my mom. Yeah, because at that point, I think you were awake with nerves for about 24 hours. Uh, and you're tired, I'm tired, and you just, you black out. My mom was upset that you fell asleep during half the pregnancy. Your mom was upset that you fell asleep during half the pregnancy. Like, I how had do you do epidural. this? I had an epidural. If I hadn't had an epidural, I wouldn't have been sleeping. Oh, yeah. That, totally I would have been miserable. There's, there's no pain, so it's And like, then I okay. didn't appreciate the nurse who came in there and said, Oh, no, we're going to turn this uh, off. We're, we're not going to let you have this anymore. Cause she had some kind of oh, something. Oh, that was because you're getting rid of the bear down. Yeah, but that was. To, well, she was like, "No, no, no! You, you look like you're asleep." I'm like, "Listen, lady, I am telling you, I'm not asleep. Am I tired a little bit? Uh, yes, but I'm not yeah. asleep. Don't turn the drugs off. I'm not ready." She turned it down because you needed to feel for the pushing, is what it was, and that's she explained it that way, and I always yeah, like, but I can follow okay. directions very well. She just had to tell me, "Okay, go." And I did it. Man, I pushed that oh, kid out. Oh, it was 45 40, minutes. Yeah, I'm telling you. I knew exactly what to do. Push the kid out 45 minutes. The faster she's out, the faster the pain's over. It was very interesting to sit there and go, all right. And I'm like, I I got to help it help. You know, I held a leg and I was there for the whole process. I saw the head and I'm like, okay. And then all, when you were crowning, it was like, all right, get the doctor. And I'm like, I'm like looking at you going, don't do anything. Don't do anything. And it's like. 
Okay, can we stop talking yeah. about me having like a child come through my crotch and give me a different <laughs> question? Because you're grossing me out. And the doctor barely caught her. What's too. the next question? Eggplants? Does that say eggplants? No. What does that say? Uh, that's expectation that you had before birth. Uh, so we'll we'll kind of change it up and go on because you're getting a little. Uh. I'm getting squeamish. There's uh, a reason why I'm not a doctor. What are some of the struggles that we have now? Finances. Finances still. Uh, I Finances feel like that's always. just something that's gonna always be there unless. We win the lottery. You win the lottery, and or even then, you we're have still going to probably well have an issue with finances. Or you have a very well-off job. You know, it's like you, <laughs> you have the money, and for us, it's like I'm a mechanic, she's a teacher. We're those are two very generic professions. You know, I don't think that there's a lot of mechanics out there. There's a lot of teachers out there. These are service industry jobs, sort in aspects, sort of thing. I mean, you're servicing by teaching children. They're reliable jobs. Yeah. They're reliable, steady jobs. They're, They're honest, good working jobs. And, you know, they, for an individual, they pay well. For a family of two, they pay well. For a family of three, it's like, okay, one hour, uh, mm, because of renting. You know, you go to rent and it's it's astronomical, it's retarded. Yeah. So it's just... Um, According to the government, I make too much, or we make too much money. Yeah. Which I find... Ridiculous. Ridiculous when they say I'm living in a two-two apartment. And they say, "Oh, well, you make enough that you can afford four hundred dollars of health insurance a month per person." And I'm like, eh. "That's a different podcast. <laughs> We're not talking about government issues, which there are a lot." Um, hmm. What? You didn't answer the question. What was the question? Oh, some of the struggles that we have now. Oh. Other than finances. Uh, I think for us, it's getting her to... For me, it's getting her to do what I'm asking her to do. Because she's at an age where she can listen simple instructions and do one Let me thing. stop you right there. Michael wants Shaylee to act like a 10-year-old. He wants to be able to yell at her from across the couch. No. Shaylee, get down and have her get down. Shaylee, come here and have her come here. Well, I'm going to tell you like this. Even if she was 10... And you told her to come here and she didn't feel like it, she'd probably take her sweet time walking over to see you. She's two. She's can, not she does not listen the way you think she does. No, but I can take her over to her toys and say you need to pick this up and with a little struggle, but sometimes okay. she does it right away. But I want you to think about what you just said. I can take her over there to pick up her toys. I've so told at her this to. age, no, at this age, you have to be very physically involved, meaning you have to physically walk her over to the toys and tell her, oh, okay, Shaylee, right these are your toys that you can play with. Okay, Shaylee, let me walk you over. This This is where you can play with chalk. You cannot color chalk on anything except for the sidewalk. So that means no coloring on the cat, no coloring on the door, no coloring on the table, no coloring on the couch, no coloring on the floor, no coloring on the kitchen floor, no coloring on the bathroom, no coloring on the bathroom door. Those are all physical Hey, I have to get up. That's why they say they have the whole thing of, oh, you don't want to have kids when you're too old because you won't be able to be too active with them. That's the part that they're referring to. No, what I'm saying is like, you know, I go to get home with her. I go to get home with her some days and I say, I can literally, as I'm going through, you know, I set my stuff down and got to, you know, reorganize and regroup uh, for everything else. I can literally look over. I've done this a couple times and not not too recent but probably about a month or two ago i could say you know shayla take your shoes off she'd sit down take her shoes off while i'm doing other stuff not even paying attention to her because she takes she her shoes off to do uh and then she sits there and i'm like all right go get a book and you know uh, while i'm doing this can you go get a book she goes gets a book and i said can you bring it she, wants to she do. brings it back she sits down and she's getting into the age of no, I don't want to clean up. No, I don't want to do that. And it's it's the no phase, and she's in terrible twos, and it's like, can you please just, please? <laughs> well, that's why it's very important now. At and we've been doing this from day one, as far as these are the rules, these are the standards, and we stick to it. Too. Right, and I mean that's very critical, especially when you're trying to raise a child. And I think this is the age between now and like five or six that really defines the path of parenting and how are you going to instill morals values beliefs and whatnot because 
this is the age where kids are going to fight you and start to argue with you. And, you know, some parents might say, you know what? This ain't worth it. I'll let you, here, I'll yeah. let you slide here, here. I'll let you slide there. And, and that and, th- and that's where I feel like, personal opinion, everybody's got their own, like they got booty holes, okay? That's where I feel like, you know, the difference is between me and maybe someone else that's in a parental situation. I'm not going to let her slide. Number one, I know what it's like in the classroom for all the children who were allowed to slide versus all the children whose parents were like, um, no, these are the rules. You will follow them. If you don't like them, there's the door. And by door, I mean there's timeout, your door, see you later. Yeah. Like today. She was, I told her, I said, do you want to go outside? She uh, said, yes. I said, okay. Do you want to play in the water? She said, yes. I said, okay. I said, okay. So then what we're going to do is you have to go put on a swimming diaper. No. Well, then you're not going outside to play with water. No. <laughs> and she's doing the fake crown. I'm like, fake. Shaylee, fake. Yeah. Go put on your, look, come with mama to put your swimming diaper on. Well, you're not going outside to play with water. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, so I go it. and I close the door to the outside and I said, all right, then I guess we're not going outside to play with water. So then she decides, oh, I want Baba. I said, okay, fine. And I said, Baba's right there. So she goes and she knocks it off the table. I said, that was not very oh, I didn't nice. See that. Oh, yes. I said, that was not very nice to knock the Baba off the table. I said, you can go pick it up now. And she's fighting me. No, I, no, no, no. And throwing her arms up and down. So I snatched her arms both sides and I put her hands on the bottle and I made her pick the bottle up yeah, we're having and to while make her she's fighting me up. going like all terrorizing Tasmanian devil and I made her put it back on the freaking coffee table and I said now you could go in time out for having an attitude and telling me no and throwing your bottle on the floor ah! I said I don't care go to time out and I walked a little behind to time out Sat her down, closed the, uh, put the gate up, turned the time on for three minutes, and then I act like I was having the best time of my life. That's that's one of the other things is that when we go to put her in timeout, we we try to show that we are having fun because we follow. We directions. want her to feel like we, it sucks to be in timeout. We it also sucks not to be able to play. We're having fun to kind of emphasize the guilt for her. Yeah, in essence. early guilt trip. Uh, one of the other things is like setting the boundaries. Like when we go to do that for chalk, of which we have chalk, we have our patio, and she's out there and she's doing the chalk. And you let her do this a couple times where you let her go on the door and go on the window. I did not realize it was not going to come off the door. I just assumed it was chalk. Washable chalk cannot come off of a painted door. I don't know why. But. Then she brings it inside and with color, with her crayons and markers, thinks that she can color the walls, thinks that she can color the floors now, thinks that she can color everything else because that was something that was, well, if I can do it out here, why can't I do it over here? And it's something different though. It's still coloring because in her mind, it's coloring still. Right. And I hear what you're saying. And so I had to backtrack my parenting from, okay, I set the boundaries as far as this, what you can and can't do. And now Now I'm having to to pull the the reins back in because it's like... And I'm a first time parent, so everything is a learning curve. And every child is different. I don't care what anybody says. Even if you have two kids, they're different, right? Mm -hmm. And so usually you're more strict as far as, no, I don't want her doing this. No, I don't want her doing this. And I'm like, eh, it's not that bad. She can do this. But then our child takes things to the next level. If you tell her, okay, Shaylee, you know, you're outside. It's chalk. This is an outside door, whatever go for it because it's not hurt anything and I figure well I'll just clean it up and it's outside no big deal I'll spray it with like some water it'll come right off well she takes it to the next level and goes oh mommy said I can color chalk on the door outside so I can now color chalk on the door inside or and, crayon or, or crayon and she will and so that's when it's like oh crap and then that's where you got to roll the reins back in and go okay that's it you can't color chalk here 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 And the only place you can color chalk is on the cement and the cement only. Not the door outside, not the window outside, the cement only. I mean, I learned my lesson the hard way, Uh, climbing the furniture. She wanted to climb on top of the coffee table and I was like, well, the coffee table is kind of small. She doesn't weigh that much. Eh, whatever. I'll let her do it a few times. 
bad idea because now in doing that she thought I said no for the record yeah whatever I I was like well it's not that big of a deal I'll just get her down in a second I didn't think it would be a continuance little did I know ignorance is bliss next thing I know her little behind decides oh well since you let me climb on top of the coffee table I'm gonna climb on top of the chair to get to the kitchen table because there's something on the kitchen table that I want that's inside the backpack that's on the kitchen table. And she's standing on the kitchen table, uh huh, getting ready to walk off. Of which I had to dart over and catch her before she fell off. I think as I almost had a heart attack. Off. The first thing I pictured was uh, your cousin jumping off the tire uh, from the truck. <sighs> I was like, oh, hell no. My kid is not about to jump off that table. So then once again. But regardless, once again, it's a learning process. Okay, gotta rein them back in. All right, we're no longer allowed to climb on this, climb on this, climb on this, climb on this. I mean, she, it's a I feel like she does it to her. Yeah. It's, a, it's learning the hard way for us and her. Because I feel like she does it to herself. It's like, okay, Shaylee, here, we'll let you have a little bit of freeway. Oh, nope. Just kidding. Snatch her right back up and go, well, now you can't do this, 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 and this. She does it to herself, I feel like. I do it to myself as a sense of, well, I let her have way too much freedom. That was dumb on my part. I shouldn't have given her that much freedom. Sometimes, though, what I think is not a big deal, okay, at the time for that specific thing is not a big deal. But with our child, and I'm sure it's with many other children, if you give them a little bit, they will escalate. They do what you call push the buttons. They want to see how far can they go before you tell them no. I think that's pretty much anyone is, uh, you know, people that you go to meet as friends. You know, they, they say a joke and it then all of a sudden it gets taken too far and you're like someone takes it the wrong way yeah and then someone takes it the wrong way and then you have to kind of readjust and come back a little bit and it's it's finding that happy medium and you know for fr- people that are friends it takes years for them to sit there and do that funneling into a point and I don't even feel like so much for friends. That's more of like people that you first meet, people that you're like cordial with, people that you're copacetic with, people that you work with. Well, one of the other things... Like if you're really truly friends with someone, you can tell them to kiss your butt and they look at you like, oh, yeah, right. Like I could tell Mary, oh, you're stupid. And she'd look at me like, you're stupid. You know what I mean? Like there's no... (laughs) I doubt it. Uh, Give me another question. My legs are sweating. It's hot over here. I feel like I'm like... I told you, it's warm over here. I feel like, you know... My uh, body parts are like just leaking everywhere. <laughs> disgusting. What are some tips that you have for some other parents? Some first time parents or other parents? Some first time parents or yeah. other parents? Like what are some tips that you feel like you could give? Um, Mine was wipes. You can never have enough wipes. Oh, you mean like in preparation? Preparation or uh, My during... biggest thing is, okay, let me tell you this. I, I know feel you, get, like, you tell everyone Prego Pops. Oh yeah, no, that's Prego that's, Pops and Jolly Ranchers. Yeah. No, but my biggest thing, and I this is my, you know, you think I was Jewish or something, but I'm not. Okay, but I'm very frugal and I'm very financial savvy. And I'm not trying to insinuate, insinuate that whatever, so please don't take this the wrong way. Okay? But no, in all seriousness, finances. Okay? I have a lot of friends who you are like, oh, I really want to be pregnant, this, that, and the other, and I... They're not financially my, set in the first place. It's not place. necessarily that they're not financially set, but they're making choices of, okay, well, I'm going to purchase a home at this price for my mortgage, and um, I'm going to purchase a car at this price, and I'm thinking to myself, well, yeah, if I didn't have Shaylee and I didn't have to pay for, you know, two thirty a week in daycare expenses and I didn't have to pay for food for Shaylee and I didn't have to pay for special milk for Shaylee, then yeah, I could probably afford, you know, a fifteen hundred, like seventeen hundred dollar mortgage payment. I could probably afford a five hundred dollar BMW or whatever. How much, how much is that a month that we pay? Two thirty times four. Almost a thousand dollars a month, yeah. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If I did not have those We'd things, have an extra thousand dollars to spend in other right. places. Right. So but my point is the biggest thing that I could say to people who are wanting to get pregnant or people who are going into that sort of road you, look at the downsize. Well no no, it's not even that. It's and I can't say when people say, Oh well, you know, 
we'll find the money where there's money and you know things will just fall into place <laughs> no it won't it will not just fall into place money does not grow on trees okay you need to realize that if you want a child if your mama like your the grandma or the grandpa is not staying home or the auntie's not staying home to watch that child then you need to incorporate how much daycare is going to cost. And please realize, 230 is what we pay now that she's two oh, years yeah. old. When she was an infant, <laughs> we paid a little over $300 a week. So, I mean, our rent at the time was $895, and we were living paycheck to paycheck. And her daycare expenses being $12.55 12, a month. And right now, we currently pay in our rent 1225 so we still pay less now in rent than we did when we had her at uh, daycare and mind you yes I know that there are other daycares that are less expensive okay but when you're coming from a first-time parent standpoint you always want the best you want the best for your child so you try did. to go above and beyond so we had a discussion of we're gonna stick her in this daycare because it looks very much like a quote unquote school. It looks very prestigious. And yeah, we made the choice to put her in the more expensive daycare. Now we only had her there for a few months before we realized, oh wait, we're in over our head. We love our child, we want the best for our child, but here you go, we're gonna take her to La Petite now because we realized our dumb mistake. We didn't appreciate living a paycheck to paycheck. I'm talking like the only thing we had left over at the, every single week was maybe 20 to $25 after gas, after uh, food, after bills, after, you know, Shaley's formula. Of which we had the unfortunateness that our child was is allergic to milk because she has an indigestion well, problem a, to a it. there's a so. protein that she's allergic yeah. in milk. So she's very hoity-toity about what kind of milk she can and can't drink. So we, drink. Have to, we had to do either soy or the, the non-dairy. And, and, and I didn't want soy. Yeah, and uh, so we, we had to go with the non-dairy one, and that one was an extra $10 a tub. And the tub was freaking three times smaller than the big tubs. Yeah. So... All I'm saying is, if you're wanting to get pregnant, that's awesome, more power to you. If you really wanna be a mom, you really wanna be a parent, that's fantastic. But you need to be realistic. Do you wanna be living paycheck to paycheck? If you don't wanna be living paycheck to paycheck, then you need to give yourself some kind of adjustment financially. Have a financial plan. Parents who are responsible make responsible decisions. If you feel like you are responsible, plan out your finances, know ahead of time. So that way you don't have those arguments with your husband or significant other about, oh my gosh, how are we gonna pay for this? Or how are we gonna do this? Because they tell you, what are the main things that cause divorces? Finances, that's mm -hmm. one of the main things. So Michael and I, we had a very long discussion multiple times about, okay, this is how much we make, this oh, is what we're we gonna spend it on. Oh, we sat down for what are we cutting back? To, right, like, we sat down, what are we cutting back? We we uh, we refinanced my car, we uh, refinanced a credit card so that we had a lesser um, APR. Like, we really went and said, okay, where can we cut corners? Okay, now after we've cut corners, how are we going to financially pan this out every single week? We started coupon clipping and yep. going to Target with Target Red Card. Of We did. Didn't we do two Target Red Cards because we split the we, we used to do two yeah, Target to... Red Cards, but then they caught us and they were like, no, Yeah, they started catching us on this. Uh, you used to be able to get two, different, uh, two, two different, yeah. two payments of two different Red Cards and, and you would get 5% like... automatic with one card and then the other one did another 5% off and they, they so started catching us. So it ultimately <laughs> added up. To get more uh, of a discount. But we at the time to. we had the Target app, coupon clipping, cartwheel, and the red card. And, and we overall, bought reusable bags. Re we, bought, we got the reusable bags because you get an extra 5% or 5 cents off. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's eco-friendly. Uh, and we just, we literally went that way. We And then we stopped buying the name brand stuff. We started buying the Target, Target brand, brand stuff. Because that was more often being on the Target app. Just to... And really reduce our finances and yeah. I think it I think it actually reduced it probably about fifty dollars every two weeks. Oh us. yeah. Well that's the difference between when we first started dating, you and I would shop at Publix like it was no big deal. You especially would shop at Publix 
and buy like stuff like you know the pre-made, pre-made stuff. meals and those yeah. were about 20 bucks a pop and i would get five or six of them because that's what i needed for the week and five that's or six meals that's what he meals. could afford at the time yeah uh so it was one of those. and that's the other thing before we had shaley i was very hoity-toity in the sense of i wanted all the meats fresh and then mm-hmm. after shaley it was like oh my gosh like and so that's where... You still where want the fresh meat, I but still it's like, want I don't want the meat. fresh meat price. <laughs> right. So that's where we had to cut back in the sense of like, um, okay, instead of having fresh chicken and fresh beef or fresh turkey, now we have to go ahead and, you know, oh, I got to buy the freezer one. And then everything goes through my mind of like, am I torturing my kid? Am I, you know, essentially giving her cancer because I am giving her frozen prepackaged stuff, you know? Um, is she going to be on St. Jude's next week? Like, you know, all those thoughts go through my mind. And I'm like, well, and it, it makes me feel like a bad parent. And that's why I still feel like, you know, man, I wish I could cut back more or do something different. Because I, that's something that I, if we won the lottery, that would be my first thing right away. Everything that's, you Farmer's know. Farmer's market and meat yep, market. Yeah. Everything as fresh as you can get it. And it's just on a family diamond budget. We just don't have the financial ability to do that, you know, and it sucks. And it just, it is what it is. Okay, so, uh, what are, uh, real quick, what are some of the highs and lows about being a parent? I would say one of the highs was from me most recently. I went to Jen's baby shower last weekend, and they had all, like, Jen's kids were there, uh, Megan's kids were there, Megan's other sister, Stephanie, her kids were there, like, there was just kids everywhere, and Rylan, you know, she's closer in age with Shaylee, um, but I did bring Shaylee because I knew Shaylee would be, like, all over the place, and I needed to enjoy myself, um, so... I, she was just getting over being sick. Too. Yeah, and I didn't want to have everybody else be sick because that's the last thing I need is for a phone call. Why'd you get my kid sick? <laughs> but, you know, plus two, I didn't even know I could bring her. I thought it was just going to be a baby shower for, you know, just the females and we were going to get together. So I was like, well, I'm not going to be the only one bringing my kid because then everybody's going to look at me like, what the heck, you know? So she stayed home with you. Plus it was Mother's Day. So, you know, it's nice to have a little break, but... Okay, so I go to that, and I'm I'm playing with the kids, because I'm naturally just, even before Shaylee, I'm naturally just drawn to kids, and I remember before Shaylee, even when I was naturally drawn to kids, like, oh, no, these are so cute, but they're not mine, I can't take them home, right? <laughs> well, the same thing with the, um, the kids from last weekend, I was playing with them and being all silly, and, you know, it was like, oh, this is cute, and then when I got home, I was like, over the top excited happy because i was no longer in that single situation where okay i played with the kids i go home i'm by myself again i i'm in that oh i want kids i wish i had kids face no no no. i played with the kids and then i go home and i have my kid i have my little squishy you know i and i i was i was over the top because i was so excited to be able to have my own and to be able to play with her and to kiss her and to hug her and to be silly with her. And it was just such a a happy moment of, yes, this is finally my life. Yes, this is finally where I want to be. So as much as I complain, as much as I say finance, as much as I say this, overall, I am 10 times happier being a mom yes i hate being pregnant yes i want another child yes i want these things and i feel like she fills a void for me that i didn't think i knew i had until she came around uh like growing up everyone always wants to be you know firefighter or space uh an astronaut or michael wanted to be a dad I felt like I wanted to be a dad and as soon as she came around it's like alright here's my life I I get to start now like I felt like my life started then Um, 
It's the same. I had the same feeling, you know, on our wedding day. My life starts now, and then it's like we have our child. My life starts now. Like it's like a new starting point. New stepping chapters. Off. I think that's yeah. why people say like there's different chapters in life. Yeah, and I feel you have like your single chapter. Yeah, uh, and it it's always a my life starts now. And you're excited and you know that's a high you know but some of the lows are definitely when I feel like when she's sick or when she totally pushes the buttons those moments where you just gonna go oh, I'm going to really yeah I but I'll be honest this is the age as much as she drives you nuts this is the age that I was like oh I can't wait I can't wait I can't wait because this is the age where I don't have to hold her to feed her. I don't have to, you know, strap her down and change easy. her diaper. Like there's I do sometimes. Well, and I understand that, but my Especially. point is I like the fact that she's more independent now, but she's still little, you know? So that's why for me, two, three, four, five, those are my favorite years because they're gradually getting more and more independent. They're gradually learning and you see them learn and they're able to like what you say do stuff you yeah. know like today when we took her to sea world she was like walking more um she was able to sit through seymour and clyde she got excited to see the sharks like i i feel like she was like all she about was the all sharks. about the sharks yes and that's actually a very interesting thing especially when you go through the tunnel in sea world uh some people and there's might get the sharks in that very scared. ominous, scared darkness of like, and you you do you see this one shark just lurking, lingering do, do, by, do, do, and the do, do, eye do, do, glows, do, 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 do. and she goes, she's like, oh yeah, like waving to it. And I'm like, yeah, she wanted a stuffy key. This thing got snaggle tooth of teeth sticking out. I'm like, it, it very it looks very scary. It's it's under a nurse shark, but it's not it's not dangerous. I mean, it's still a shark, but it's. Not as dangerous as, you know, some of the other ones that are out there. But she's like, look at And I'm like, that, that's not scaring you, but Elmo did. <laughs> I was baffled. I'm like, I, I, I don't I understand I think the this. thing, though, too, though, with the sharks, they're in a tank. They have that distance. Yeah, they have a distance. There's a, there's a separation where I can see and point and because you're not going to do anything. Because even she was walking away from Elmo at breakfast, yes, she, wanted to she wave. waved. She and waved. Then, she and they were like, oh, okay, maybe she's ready. Nope. <laughs> so, yeah, we're like, oh, so you want to go over and say hi to Elmo? Nope. <laughs> Her nose are hysterical now and it's so like, hard. I'm, because I'm just going to wave at Elmo from a distance. We're not supposed to laugh when she does that, but it's so... It's kind of cute. It's, it's so it's hard. Cute. It's like, do you want to do this? No! <laughs> and she's serious. It's not just like, oh, I'm saying no to say no. Like, yeah. that's because of the word I, I learned or whatever. No, she really, like, if you ask her, she will really tell you yes or no. Do you want this pouch? No! Do you want this pouch? And the head goes up and down. Yes! Yes. Yeah, the learning what yes is is very interesting because it's like, uh, which way is my head supposed she to looks bobble? Like, she's had, like it's like an aneurysm, like kind of like. W which seizure. way is this supposed to bobble? And then yeah, yeah, okay, this is what it's supposed to be like, and it's you can see the learning happening. So, uh, and lastly, what do you think parenting is? What do you want to get out of, like in life, as far as being a parent? But it's something you feel like you get out of being a parent. For okay. me, it's patience. Yeah. I already have that. I'm like, oh. Like, <laughs> Go I'm, to my seventh period. Talk to me about patience. You wouldn't last a day. I'm learning way more patience now than before. And still, sometimes in the car, it's like I, I can't handle the crying. And that's just... That's just, where we differ. Because yeah. for me, it's like, nah, one ear, not the other. I'll turn the radio up. If she's just screaming loud just to be like... You're not paying attention to me, even though, like, hello, I'm driving. I can't exactly turn around and pay attention to you 24-7. I've checked to see if everything's okay with you, and you're still screaming at me because, well, I didn't give you the correct uh, pouch. Oh, <coughs> no. I'm turning up the radio, and I'm turning you one ear and not the other. And eventually, she does stop because she gets the hint of, oh, mommy's not going to give me what I want if I continue screaming at her. And I tell her, when she calms down, I said, would you like this pouch instead? Peace, mama. Peace, mama. Okay. 
So what is some something that you, you want to get out of being a parent? I think my biggest thing is I want to make sure that I raise Shaylee. My, my, for me, being a parent, it's all about Shaylee. So my biggest thing is making sure that I raise Shaylee in a way so that she doesn't feel the way I felt. And I mean, no disrespect to my parents because, I mean, I think in their heart of hearts, they tried the best that they could with the best that they had. But ultimately, my mom was a stay-at-home mom until I was like four or five, until basically my sister was born. And I remember those years being like the happiest years of my life. My, my, I was, my mom was all about me. My dad, even though he would six months out to sea, six months home, you know, being in the Navy, he was still all about me. Like wanted to play with me, wanted to do all these things. And even when Sarah was first born, we lived in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Everything was fine. And then we moved to Illinois in Schaumburg and I started uh, kindergarten and it was okay. But then I really noticed a huge difference in first and second grade where it was like a huge disconnect. And my mom always reverts back saying, well, it's because I had to go to work and she wasn't used to working. She didn't want to work. She wanted to be a stay at home mom. Like that was her thing. And so she, she like blames it on that. But you know, my dad, what was his excuse? You know, it was all of a sudden like I was a leopard and I, I started acting out because of it. I mean, I started stealing. I, at first and second grade, so we're talking seven, eight year old. I started stealing. I started where I would run down to the 7-Eleven and tell them, oh, I'm going to Gina's house. Gina go tells her parents, oh, I'm going to Ashley's house. She can't be arrested so, now. She's definitely beyond the statute of limitations. Yeah, so. whatever. <laughs> So I started walking down to the 7-Eleven with Gina one day and Gina's parents are driving by in the station wagon. They see us and we see them and we're like, oh. So we knew we were in trouble. But my point is, I would tell my parents all kinds of lies and all kinds of stuff. And looking back at it now, I know as an adult, I was doing those things because I was acting out because I wasn't getting the attention that I was used to getting. It was like they had a disconnect. No one sat down and did my homework with me. Okay, you know how you're supposed to study your vocab words or study your sentences or whatever or do your homework and usually the mom sits at the table with you or the dad sits at the table with you? My parents weren't doing any of that. And they could say whatever they want to, but they weren't there for me. They weren't there for me from first grade, second grade, third grade. My dad goes out to sea again when we move to Florida in third grade and now my mom's looking at me as like a second parent at third grade. Because your dad wasn't there. Because my dad wasn't there. And so I'm the one giving Sarah a bath every night. I'm the one cleaning out the tub and then putting her in. All at the same time, myself not taking a bath, not taking a shower. I'm taking care of her. I'm, I mean, I know you have a difference of opinion, but I'm sorry. A third grader should not have to get his or, home, his or her own breakfast. Maybe, you know, what we talked about as far as like setting out the bowl, setting out the cereal and like, okay, the child practices pouring the cereal inside the bowl. But at third grade, nine years old, I'm supposed to be self-reliant to make sure that I brushed my teeth, uh, ate cereal without someone teaching me th these things prior to that. I mean, I'm sorry. I respectfully disagree. And so my whole thing is, and even like it got worse being a teenager, you know, I don't want Shaylee or any of our other kids, whether we have other kids or not, to ever feel the way I felt. I mean, I felt very alone. I felt very ostracized. I felt very different. I felt very sad. And I read studies now that say, oh, you know, the more interaction you have with your children, the more loving and affection that you show to your children, the more affection that, you know, you show to your husband and, <laughs> and you know like make nice and like really go above and that beyond nice. and go it above and beyond nice. the children tend to have less anxiety the children tend to have less depression because they're fulfilled that whole self-fulfillment making sure that you know i'm happy with myself making sure that i love myself it stems you know from the parents showing love this is what love looks like this is what love feels like 
And so I went through my teenage years, teenage years, always wanting a boyfriend. Never really had one, you know, the two week rule, whatever, but always wanting a boyfriend because I wanted to feel that love. I wanted to feel the attention that I wasn't getting ultimately from my parents or from my family, you know? And so my biggest thing is I don't want Shaylee to ever feel the way I feel. And I feel like I set these goals in my mind of like, okay, if I can get to five, get her to five years old and she still feels happy, I'm doing my job. If I can get her to 10 years old and she still feels happy, then I'm doing my job. If I can get her to 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, whatever, I want Shaylee to grow up with feeling like these are my parents, they care about me, they love me, no matter what, I can always come to them, I can always talk to them. Even when I talk to my students at school about the reproductive system, everything I'm saying to them and the conversation, how I'm saying it to them, is the same way that I would have the conversation with Shaylee. As far as, listen, I'm not telling you don't have sex. Sure, I'm not telling you. I really don't you, know how that conversation should go. <laughs> it, it, like, it's not. People make it bigger deal than what it is, okay? And I'm telling you, I, I tell my kids at school, I'm like, I'm not telling you don't have sex. I'm not telling you sex is wrong. What I'm telling you is, listen, these are the repercussions and these are the possibilities of what can happen if and when you choose to have sex. If you're not ready for the responsibility of possibly getting an STD and being responsible enough to go to the doctor or tell your parents, hey, I'm sexually active, I have an STD. Or if you're not responsible enough and you don't feel comfortable enough telling your parents, hey, I'm pregnant, or hey, can I have birth control, or hey, can you take me to the store so I can buy a condom, or I need to go buy a condom, but I'm embarrassed, I'm scared. If you feel all those things, then you are not ready to have sex. And I tell them all the time, too, as far as, not all the time, because obviously this is just a lesson, but just the idea of, okay, if you decide that you're going to have sex, and you want to have sex, and you think you're ready, and you've you know, you've thought about everything through and okay, so you have sex. But then afterwards you think, oh man, you know what? I, I'm not ready. This this just I'm this is not me. I'm not ready for this. I thought I was ready, but I'm not. I told him I told him, I said, listen, it is perfectly okay to go to the person that you're having sex with and say, Listen, I know I said I was okay with this. I know I said I'm comfortable, but I, I'm just I I'm having second thoughts. I'm not ready. You know, and I, I told him the same way I would tell Shaylee, if the person respects you, cares about you, and really wants to be with you, he or she will say to you, I understand, let me, let me know when you are ready, we'll talk about it again, and you know, you have those conversations, and I tell them, I say, listen, if you're not prepared to have those kinds of conversations, those kind of adult-like conversations, those mature, responsible conversations, then you're not ready to have sex. So ultimately what I'm trying to say is I want to have the open communication with Shaylee. So my goal as a parent to make sure that Shaylee feels loved. My goal as a parent to make sure Shaylee doesn't feel shafted if we have another child like, oh, well, before I was getting all the attention (laughs) and now you're giving this kid all the attention. No, I, I am going to bust my behind, and I know it's sometimes impossible to do at certain times, but I'm going to bust my behind to make sure that I try my best to even out the attention. So that way they don't turn out like me going, oh, well, Sarah got two play kitchens. She got a cardboard kitchen and a plastic kitchen. Oh, Sarah got a Nintendo 64, and I got a regular Nintendo and begged you left and right for a Super Nintendo because I wanted to play Super Mario, and you kept telling me, no, I don't want to do that because every year I'm going to have to upgrade to a Super Nintendo, or every year I'm going to have to upgrade to a new system. But then the minute that years. Sarah asks for a Super Nintendo or Nintendo 64, oh, here you go. Sarah gets brought home by the popo. She got grounded for two weeks. If I got grounded, if I got brought home by the popo because I got caught skipping school, my head would be on a platter and I'd be grounded for a month. I threw a house party and told on myself at 17 that I drove all the way to Disney on a freaking permit, okay? Told on myself. That's responsibility. And I got grounded for two months. This chick comes home from the police 
because oh. no but seriously it comes home because she got caught skipping number one she got caught skipping number two she got home she got brought home by the police and my parents are like two weeks you're grounded and even then I remember them not being so strict about it my parents told me oh you can't date anybody who's older than you what happens? Sarah goes into the ninth grade. You want to ask me how old her boyfriend was? Oh, going into the ninth grade. How old was her boyfriend, Michael? Ask me. In the twelfth grade. Yeah. Got asked to prom as a freshman. And my parents, oh, well, he's in ROTC. The f I don't care if he's in Japanese. ROTC? So what? Because <laughs> that's a class. I'm just saying, it should, it, that's my, that's my stigma. I don't ever want Shannon to feel like, and I purposely almost want to have another child to prove to my parents, hey, look, it's not that hard to make both children feel loved. It's not that hard to divvy up the finances. And that's my thing with the finances too. I'm not going to have another child if Shaylee can't feel loved financially as well. I don't want her to feel stiffed. Like, oh, because we have another baby in the family, you know, now I, I, you know. That's, that's one thing that I'm a, I'm, I'm a little, I, I differ a little on is that I feel like she can still feel loved with little, like less amount of toys. Cause I see what, her rooms are exploding with toys right now. And I'm just like. Well, don't get me wrong. I'm not placing love like when everyone goes well love. what does she want and i'm like uh let's just do clothes like uh, she's growing let's just do clothes well and i understand what you're saying but and i don't get me wrong i'm not placing you know the value of love on how many physical tangible tangible things she can have but at the same time when it you comes are. to yeah. like oh prom is coming up well we can't afford to get you a dress you know, I don't want to be in those situations or we can't afford to get you shoes or, you know, I don't want to be in that financial predicament Yeah. because, well, I chose to have a second child and that's why, you know what I mean? I want to be able to say, it doesn't matter if I have a second child or not. I'm in the financial position where if Shaylee's going to prom, I can buy her a prom dress. Yeah. If Shaylee's going to prom, I can buy her her prom shoes. Yeah. Uh... So it's just one of those trying to make sure that we're getting her what it is that we feel like she deserves as a child from a parent's perspective. And that And that's all based on personal opinion because some parents would be like, Well, so and so doesn't need this. But you know what? I didn't grow up with a Barbie Power Wheels car and you bet your skippy that I bought my child on her second birthday a Barbie Power Wheels car. It was Minnie Mouse and I don't care. She almost got into a couple accidents. <laughs> she almost hit a Bumping. couple cars. Okay, she was on the sidewalk and she bumped into the cars that are parked on the sidewalk area. Let's tell our neighbors that when they have to see their bumper. Um... Well, uh, this is actually a fairly long episode. Uh, my wife, because I talk a lot. My wife likes to talk a lot. I'm she's the center used of attention. To, she, she's used to talking a lot, being a teacher, uh, after, what, six periods? Eight, eight hours a day of being a teacher and talking? Yeah. That's all I do. And then Michael wants to talk when I get home. <laughs> she's, yeah. She's burnt I'm out at that thrilled. point. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled by the fact that my husband wants to have a conversation with me after I had to talk 24-7 for six periods straight. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. And then I got to take care of my child, too. Oh, Lord. Send me a rejoice. So, uh, well, um, is there any location that people you want uh, people to follow you at? find you or um... no don't find me <laughs> if, if, if i want to be in communication with you i y you will know no plugs no instagram no, no nothing no if i want a communication i i would tell you and we would have a conversation but we don't know each other like that so she's she's more of a let's keep it a little private and she wanted to hop in and do the the podcast and i'm like uh okay so it's like you want to be private but you're hopping into a podcast it's going on youtube and uh, Apple, iTunes, and everywhere else that Anchor helps I think it's my biggest fear is I got fired once from posting something on social media about okay. 
you know, an opinion about this or opinion about that. And I and just don't want the same thing. It's completely understanding. And so I don't so, need anybody to find me. That's why I keep mine completely separate and I don't talk about my work. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but I am Mike the Mecha Man, T-H-E-M-E-K-K-A-M-A-N, the Mecha Man. This was what it's like to be a parent. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to be currently working on... Uh, trying to get a separate YouTube channel for just this uh, and probably a separate uh, Twitter for it as well. Uh, I don't really know how that works yet, so uh, just kind of keep in mind, watch out for that. Uh, you can catch it on iTunes. Where else does, if the mouse wants to work, where else does this distribute? Oh, by the way, I love my um, wireless mouse at school and all my kids keep telling me about how cool it is. Yep. Let's see, where else would you be finding this podcast? What is Anchor? Anchor's where I distribute it. Oh, so wouldn't they have to know what Anchor is? No, it gets distributed other places. Uh, you can catch it on... Oh, I wish I was prepared. I would have worn my contacts, my hair would have been down straightened, my face would have been shiny because I would have redone my makeup. Ha ha ha, you sat there and you wanted to do this. I didn't think you would agree to it. <laughs> well, actually, no, I shouldn't say that. I was hoping you would agree to it, but I didn't think I would have to be video. I thought it was just voice. Uh, I am on uh, Anchor, Apple, uh, Pocket Cast and Radio Public so far, uh, all of them, what it's like to be a parent. Uh, you can go follow and listen to it there or check it out on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Mecha Man. There's a separate playlist for what it's like to be a parent. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, follow, do all the things and I will see you, we will see you guys next time. Maybe you will join me again on another episode or it will just be me and uh, my goal is to get my mom on here. Possibly next. I have to so, uh, Because it is I my mom. If I come on again, it's just going to be me venting all over again. So if you don't <laughs> want to hear me vent, don't log on that day. Uh, my, my goal is to try and get my mom uh, to do it. Uh, my, I wanted to do it during Mother's Day time, but... Uh, it was, it was a we lot. We had way too much This month it has Shaley's been a birthday, lot. So. We had Mother's Day. We've had so many things just happening on the weekends. Like Yeah, and so I haven't Monday, been able to get to May it. May is so. just hectic. Like May's everybody been, has yeah. something going on in May. So. I appreciate for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.